Oh hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. So I've just been looking through some of these trees and uh, it is the repotting season after all. So it is a case of selecting which ones you, you want to repot and how you want to style them in the future. And I've just been going through looking for the trees that are beginning to break buds. And you know there's a tree just over here. This is an Amelanchia that I've had for a little while grown from seed. This is just starting to break bud, so it's a perfect time to repot this and put this into a little bonsai pot. Right, so this is the Amelanchia. Uh, as I say, started from seed. I think it must be two, possibly three years old. I think back then I just had a bunch of seeds. I, I tried sowing them. Some took, some didn't, as is the case. And, and this is one that took. And I've just gradually been working it and styling it as a little bonsai tree. So it's not a bad little looking tree. It's uh, pretty good. It's, it's budding out, as I say. You know, they are starting to break bud. It's uh, beginning to break bud up top. And yeah, it's uh, not a bad little looking tree. Um, I've put a piece of wire around it just to put a bit of curve and a bit of bend in it just to give it a bit of interest and uh, it's not looking too bad. Um, these little shoots just at the side, these are cuttings that I did, I think it was the beginning of last year. So uh, yeah, springtime of 2023. So it'd be interesting to see if these have rooted and of course we can increase our stock if they have. So what I wanted to do today is take this out of the park and see what the roots look like. I haven't touched this. Uh, for the last three years ever since I sowed those seeds you know two three years back so it'd be very interesting to see what the root base looks like and then my hope was I could put it into this little pot so we don't need this little tab and there you can see it does say Amelanchia but that's faded that's I think I put that in about a couple of years back so that's faded over time let's just put that back there and just gently ease this out of the pot I'm not quite sure how well this will come out oh here we go here we go Looking good, looking good. Yeah, looking good, very good. Very nice web of roots. Very healthy tree. We do have a few white tips. So that just shows you, you know, these trees are starting to break dormancy a lot earlier. I mean, I'm filming this at the, well, in the middle of February and already we're seeing white tips on the roots. That's how, how early this year uh, these trees are starting to bud out and break dormancy. I mean, we have had a very, a very warm start to the year, and of course, this does have an impact on trees and how soon they they break bud and and break dormancy. So, what I'm going to do is just use this little handy dandy root rake. I think what I'm first going to do is see if these cuttings have taken. So let's just firm this out just like so. See if we can find any roots on the bottom. Just gently tease away the soil and to work out what kind of roots we have and later on we'll be making a selection and trying to create some sort of a root base but as I say I haven't touched this tree since I sowed those seeds so this is that one there is a little root on that fantastic we have another little amelanchia that's excellent I wasn't sure if these root from cutting but there we go there's a little root on that, fantastic. Let's put that over there. Let's check out the other one. This one's a lot bigger and, and there is a bud starting to pop on the end of it. So I would imagine that this does have roots on the bottom. Just dig down, dig all the way down. All the way down. This goes way down. Oh, there you go. And this one, and no roots on that one. Yeah, no roots at all. That's kind of interesting because there's a bud just starting to pop there and there's a bud just starting to pop on the bottom. So I might plant that up as a cutting and you never know, maybe it might take. But yeah, no roots. So I'm just teasing out the soil, working my way around, taking your time. And when you do this, always use the rake in the radial, in a, you know, in a radial pattern. You know, follow the way that you want your roots to grow. And what that means is if you do tear through any crossing roots, it doesn't matter because you, you don't want them anyway. You want to focus on those radial roots going around because that's ultimately how trees in the wild grow. And 
you know, I mean, there are exceptions to the rule. And no doubt if you go out into the woods, you'll see plenty of trees that are grown in very interesting, funky ways. But, you know, the general practice in bonsai is to have a nice radial root system. It's a little bit dense. You can see some of this soil in here is pretty dense. So you know, I think it will do, do a lot better than more free draining uh, bonsai uh, soil medium, I'm sure. I think what I do, I rinse this up in a bowl of water and we we'll try to get a better look at these these roots and try try to find out where the root base is. So these are our roots, our very healthy roots, uh, plenty of white tips. I mean that's quite amazing how how soon these have these trees have you know woken from dormancy and are starting to bud out and grow. Um, what we did want to do with this tree is try to work out where the root base is. We can see the roots kind of divide into two. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but you have a, a thick root coming that way and then a thick root coming that way. So perhaps not the most ideal, ideal root base in the world. Full of character, but not ideal. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut in here. There's a, a root coming out just there at a right angle, so I'm going to cut just behind that, get rid of all of this. And then we go right next to that, we can see this big root coming off here. We go right through that and cut off all of that. And that, I think, is going to be our new root base just there. And that fork in the roots should make for quite an interesting feature. I mean, either that or it will fuse over time. So it's an either or with that. But it certainly does add to a, a kind of like a, a tape. You know, like how roots taper out as they get to the ground. So you have that nice, you know, kind of, you know, as roots, as the trunk goes down, it tapers out into the ground. We well, are naturally going to have that with this because you have that fork. Yeah, that this is, could be a, an excellent looking root base. Doesn't look like much at the minute, but could be excellent in the future. So a lot of these roots are very long, so we don't need that root that long. Let's cut that back. Uh, we don't need that root that long. Let's cut that back. And I think we'll just leave that, plant that up into some better soil, let it grow, and come back to it in maybe another year, maybe two, and work on it a little bit more. So yeah, a lot of fruit has come off. Wow, a big clump of fruit and all of this. Probably more than half the root base. Wow. <laughs> So what we're going to have to do is obviously there's a big hole in the bottom of this pot. We're going to have to add a little bit of screen. So for that, I'm just going to use a little bit of this black nylon mesh. And I'm just going to cut a small square. Just using the root pruners to do this. You know, they're on the go and, you know, why not? <laughs> so this would just go on the bottom of the pot or in the bottom of the pot, just like so and should be fine. Now, I've said before, you know, I'm not a fan of wiring screen in the bottom of pots. A reason being is if you just grab some soil, put that on top, just like so, with a little bit more, that's going to hold the screen in place without an issue. And you can see that this, that, that screen isn't going to move. I really don't see the point of wiring screen into a pot. And the other thing is you can imagine you know, once in a couple of years time when we come back to this tree and and uh, root prune it in the future, the, the getting that screen out the bottom of the pot it could prove to be a bit difficult. And especially if the roots have, have grown through it and there's all different issues with uh, with that. And, you know, when you have the, the roots tying themselves up with the wire and all this other kind of stuff that happens, I just think that you can prevent a lot of that by just putting a screen in the bottom of the pot, putting your soil on top and just planting it, planting your tree in. I mean, it just it just seems like it's such a more basic way of doing it. But yeah, of course, if you like, you know, wiring your screen in your pot, then then go for it. And, you know, it's kind of horses for courses, really. Some people like to do it and some people don't. But for me, I prefer not to. So I'm going to put a little bit more salt into the pot before I put the tree in. Now, in case you're wondering what this mix is, this is just cocoa mix with a little bit of perlite and a little bit of fine grit. Now, I'm going to play around with my um, bonsai soil medium in the future. I have bought some perlite, some, uh, 
some um, vermiculite, some uh, pine bark, and some other bits and pieces too. So that will be in an upcoming video. I'm going to sort of experiment with different types of sort of ingredients, I guess you could say, and try to come out with a, a good medium, you know, a, a better medium, I guess you could say, for growing trees in. But this is just a mixture that I've been using for seed projects and things like that. So I figured I still have some on the go. So why not use it for this tree? It's free draining. It's more than suitable and it should do just the job. And this is only a young tree anyway. So, you know, it does need to develop a long way. So let's just add a little bit more. So if the tree just goes in the pot, just like so, bring our bowl of soil back. and just put it behind. I'm hoping I have enough. I think we'll have just enough to pop this tree. This is just the, as I was saying, this is just a bit of soil and that that I mixed up for my seedling projects. And when I can always mix up some more, but this is just, you know, what's left over from that batch. You can use the remaining of it, or, you know, what's left on this project, then that'd be good. And I think I might be able to do just that. Just hold the tree in place and tip this in. And put the last little bit in, and that's perfect. Made to measure. So that is that little little Amalankia bonsai tree all potted up into its new home. So you might be wondering, why didn't I wire this tree into the pot? Well, the thing is, not only don't I believe in wiring a screen to the bottom of the pot, I also don't believe in wiring a tree into the pot. Reason being is that as though as your roots develop, especially your surface roots. The, the roots near the base will obviously grow out and the tree may rise from the pot. Now, what's going to happen is as the tree starts to push itself out of the pot, the wire that you've put, put in place to wire your tree into the pot is going to dig into those surface roots. And over time, especially if you don't sort of check your tree regularly, and, and you do tend to sort of bury the, the areas where you've twisted the, the wire and you know, it's kind of buried that under the, the, the soil, you're not going to see it. And of course, when you come to repot the tree, you can end up with wire marks all over your surface roots. And if you're hoping to achieve a really attractive nabari on your bonsai tree, well, that isn't, well, at least it doesn't seem to me that that would be the best way to go about it. So what I do, I just use a couple of rocks, just like so. I place them just around the trunk, just like so. Wedge them in place, just like so. And that is going to hold the tree in place just until the roots establish themselves in this new soil medium and after like three four weeks we can take these rocks away and the tree can just go on and do its own thing so that is our little amalankia bonsai tree all potted up oh almost forgot about our cuttings so this is just a regular flower pot just filled with some uh, cocoa mix this doesn't have any additives to it it's just pure cocoa Cocoa mix, uh, cocoa mix even, or cocoa husk. It's going to make a couple of little holes, like so. Uh, the thicker one didn't have any roots. Let's have a bit of callusin on the end, which is good. Just going to poke that in just like so. And the other one did have a little root, so make sure not to damage that in any way. Make a little hole and gradually tease that in. Yeah, that is in that little hole. And then always find don't press the soil down but instead hold your cutting and just tap the side and that will ensure that there's full contact around the, the little root on the bottom and also the stem yeah, and hopefully these these root and grow on well and in many many years time we can train these as little bonsai trees so that's the little amalankia bonsai tree all potted up so yeah, thanks for joining me on this one. Kind of a fun little project today, just repotting the 
the Amalankia bonsai tree. Very young tree, has a long way to go before it becomes a fully fledged bonsai tree. Uh, it's full of buds, there's buds up and down it, there's plenty of buds at the top that are about to break. So yes, the root pruning will hold it back or kind of stunt its growth a little bit for now, but you know, over the next few weeks and months, it will put out some top growth and, and, and start to look really good. And we'll be coming back to this, you know, shaping the top and the canopy and getting it looking like some very interesting looking little tree, hopefully. And then, of course, we had the two little freebies, the two little cuttings. So, yeah, hopefully these grow on and become some interesting trees. And uh, we're, yeah, have three, well, I guess, for the price of one. So that's, that's always a good deal. But anyway, guys, yeah, thanks for joining me on this one. Hope you have a great day and I will catch you on the next one.